Hi everyone! In today's video, we are going to explore two important concepts in electronics and physics using simple tools like an oscilloscope and a function generator, Lissajous figures and resonance in RLC circuits. These experiments are both practical and will help you virtually understand concepts you have many learned theoretically. We can use Lissage figures to accurately observe the resonance of a circuit. Let's see how it's done. Before we dive into the experiment, let's talk a little about Lissage figures. These curves are formed by intersection of two oscillating signals on an XY plane. If the signals have different frequencies or phase differences, they produce beautiful shape like ellipses, circle, or even more complex patterns. These patterns are used to analyze the relationship between two signals, such as phase difference or frequency ratio. Now, let's see how we can create these curves using an oscilloscope and a function generator. First, connect the oscilloscope and function generator using a PNC cable. Set a sinusoidal signal with a frequency of 10 kHz of the first channel. Set the output of the second channel of the function generator to 10 kHz as well. Press the auto set button. Observe the two signals. If you increase the frequency of one channel by 1 Hz, you'll see the signal start moving on the oscilloscope screen. Activate the XY mode on the oscilloscope. Press the Acquire button. The location of this button may vary depending on your oscilloscope model. This is a Pictet model 1404 oscilloscope. It is a 100 MHz dual channel oscilloscope, which is a good option for lab and repair work. I'll provide a purchase link in the description. Pictet produces over 400 products that can be used by students, educational and research centers. This is a Lissajous figure. By changing the frequency or phase difference, the shape of the curve will change. Center the curve using the position vertical button and adjust its size using the scale function. Well, first change the frequency. Notice how the shape of the curve changes with changes in frequency on each channel. Let's return to the initial state. Now, change the waveforms. Beautiful shapes are produced. While these shapes are aesthetically pleasing, we're more interested in their application in electronics. Let's return to the initial state and press the auto set button. Now, let's take a look at the RLC circuit and the phenomenon of resonance. This circuit consists of three main elements, a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. When an AC current is applied to the circuit, there is a specific frequency at which the circuit has the maximum response. This frequency, known as resonance, is a key concept in electronic and wave systems and plays a significant role in many applications, from filters to radio circuits. Let's perform this experiment to observe the resonant frequency in practice. This is the RLC circuit. The resistance value is 330 ohms. The capacitor is 100 nanofarads with the code 104. Let's measure the inductance.
I'll put the LCR meter in automatic mode. The inductance is 136 microhenries. I want to calculate the resonant frequency and then verify it using Lissajo figures. In DC current or at low frequencies, the inductor allows current to pass, acting like a short circuit. However, when AC current is applied, the inductor starts to resist. This is the inductive reactance, denoted by XL. Now, the capacitor does not allow DC voltage to pass. But in AC current, as the frequency increases, the resistance to current flow decreases. This is the capacitive reactance, denoted by XC. The resistance value does not play a role in resonance. Remember that at the resonance frequency, the impedance of the circuit is minimal, and the current is maximum. This phenomenon is very important in wave system and electrical filters. What is inductive reactance? Consider this diagram. Inductive reactance is essentially the resistance a coil offers to alternating current. This resistance arises from the phenomenon of self-induction where changes in current in a coil induce a voltage that opposes the change in current. The value of inductive reactance is directly proportional to the frequency of the alternating current and the self-inductance of the coil. This is the formula for inductive reactance. XL, inductive reactance, in ohms, F, frequency of the alternating current, in hertz, L self inductance in Henry. This graph shows that as the frequency increases in a coil, the inductive reactance increases linearly. This means that the higher the frequency, the more resistance the coil offers to the flow of current. This is the graph for a capacitor. In a capacitor, as the frequency increases, capacitive reactance decreases inversely and in a curved manner. This is because a capacitor acts as a short circuit at high frequencies. The point of intersection of the inductor and capacitor graphs represent the resonant frequency. At this frequency, the inductive and capacitive reactances are equal and opposite, so they cancel each other out. As a result, the impedance of the circuit reaches its minimum value approximately equal to the resistance. We want to observe this on an oscilloscope. Connect the positive probe of the function generator to the capacitor and the alligator clip to the beginning of the resistor. Connect the first oscilloscope probe to the function generator and the second probe after the inductor. At a specific frequency, the inductor and capacitor will cancel each other out, acting like a simple wire. So, by changing the frequency in the function generator and reaching the resonant frequency, the capacitor and inductor will behave like a wire, and the waveform on both channels of the oscilloscope will overlap. It will be as if there is no component between the two probes. There should also be no phase difference. Now, what is the formula for resonant frequency? L, inductance value in Henry's. C, capacitance value in farads. There is no need for calculations. There are websites that can calculate these values for you. According to the calculation, the resonant frequency of the circuit is approximately 43 kHz. Now, let's practically examine the circuit. Connect the function generator to both ends of the circuit. Connect the first oscilloscope probe to the capacitor and the second probe after the inductor.
We start with a low frequency sine wave shape. Gradually change the frequency of the function generator until the amplitudes of the two voltages on the oscilloscope become equal. At a specific frequency, the amplitude value is the same and there is no phase difference. This frequency is the resonant frequency of the circuit. In this circuit, the value is 43 kHz. This number is almost the same as the calculate value, which can be affected by various factors such as environmental noise. Now, we want to observe resonance using Lissajou figures. I'll set the oscilloscope to XY mode. If the resonant frequency is correct, we will see a straight line. It should not be an ellipse. I am increasing the frequency. Pay attention to the shape of the curve. The curve is seen as an ellipse. No, I am decreasing the frequency. Again, we see an ellipse. By changing the frequency and reaching the resonant frequency, a straight line is seen on the oscilloscope. If this video was useful to you, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. Thank you for watching the video.